everyone, this is Professor Benjamin, and you have made it through, almost through week one of coming back to our regular scheduled program. Um, so I know this is a really stressful time for all of us, um, including myself. Um, I know a lot of you are still working, you're trying to take care of children, um, you're trying to homeschool children, uh, you're trying to manage all the parts of your life. Um, I'm doing the same thing, um, and I know it's probably not as extreme as some of your uh, situations, um, but we do have to continue on with this, and I want to get you the college credits that you deserve by the end of the semester, because it would stink to have gone this far um, in this process to have all of this happen and then all of the hard work that you have put in up to this point go to waste. So um, I just ask that you keep submitting your posts, make sure they're meeting the requir requirements that we've had um, for the entire semester and taking your quizzes each week and then that way we can just plow ahead. Um, so just a couple things. This week coming up, we only have one post due, so that's a breath, a breath of uh, fresh air for you, is that we're covering non-renewable energy next week. The other thing is, is that along with non-renewable energy is the fact that you're supposed to watch Gasland 1 or Gasland 2. Um, of course, since you can't go to your library to get this, it, you can access this film um, through Amazon or um, through some other source. Um, there is a question on the final exam regarding Gasland. Um, you can watch Gasland 1 or Gasland 2 um, to be able to access that um, film. You can always find um, enormous amounts of the film on YouTube as well. So if you have a hard time finding it where you have to pay for it, because I know this is a really difficult financial time for everyone, you can always YouTube the significant portions of the film. Okay, so that's um, what we're going to cover next week. So renewable, non-renewable energy next week, uh, initial post due by Tuesday, response post due by Thursday, um, quiz due by Sunday, 11.59. So the reason for this video is that I'm writing your roundup for the week. Um, I've typed out the answers that are going to be um, two answers that I find are hard for students to answer on the final exam for climate change and for air pollution. So you want to make sure you read through those. And then the second part of the roundup is this video, um, which will kind of help you with population and water. Okay, so population, um, a lot of really good questions and answers this week because um, actually one of the things that happens with the human population or any population is once it exceeds its carrying capacity, um, the environment puts restrictions on that population. And some of them can be the fact that the population has lack of resources, meaning lack of food, lack of access to clean water. Uh, disease hits those populations and then what happens is the population has a massive dieback to below the carrying capacity line. Now am I saying that the COVID-19 virus is um, is going to be the ultimate die-off of the human population? No, but what I am saying is viruses and disease are in the in the environment for reasons um, and a lot of those reasons are to keep populations within check um, and so this could be one of the ways in which the environment is realizing that the human population has exceeded its carrying capacity and the human population is being exposed to a new type of virus and these viruses remember um, kind of region re-engineer themselves to become stronger or different viruses okay so so think about that and, and take that into account. The other thing is, is that there was an awesome um, NPR special on about COVID-19. And one of the reasons that um, a expert in the field gave for the reason why COVID-19 um, has come and we're going to start to see a lot more different strange strains of viruses is because of environmental reasons is that there are a lot of people going into jungles and into rainforests and other remote parts of the world to clear cut them so that uh, people can raise cattle um, to send to market um, especially in the United States um, 
fast food chains need more beef so um, they go into these remote and poor parts of the world they tell people to clear cut rainforests to then raise cattle um, and what happens is these first individuals who go into these remote locations the clear cut don't have access to food so what do they do is they hunt wild game or bats or birds or other species and they eat them because that's the only food that they have it accessible to them and with that comes the fact that strains of viruses can then uh, when these people ingest these foreign species they are then exposed to these viruses and so that is something that you want to consider and think about in relation to this class and the fact that we are now seeing these wild game um, or wild species markets that are out there that illegal markets that a lot of people aren't even aware of where people buy and trade illegal species um, within the internet or the globalization community um, so it's something that you want to think about and take into account um, during this time um, so that's one thing so population number one um, the other thing is of course the social consequences related to the one China child policy uh, the one China child policy was put into effect to curb uh, population growth in China in the 1980s um, and what happened was is that they didn't think about those social consequences that were going to come from that is that you could have more than one child but you were taxed heavily um, and with that came the fact that a lot of the poorer communities individuals could not pay the tax so if they had a girl first and remember culturally in China boys are more acceptable than girls because number one they carry on the family name number two is that they actually are the social security system in China so in the United States you receive a check a social security check that allows you maybe to live somewhat on your own when you reach a certain retirement age in China you live with your son um, and his new wife uh, hashtag wife uh, in China and so that is something that you want to take into consideration is that's why families wanted boys because they carried on the family name number two they could work uh, in the family um, farming business and number three is that they were the social security system so if you had a girl first um, a lot of times that was really a hardship for you so number one they would kill the girl um, after childbirth number two is they would abort if they found out the sex of the child so actually in China they um, banned ultrasounds to tell the sex of the baby but then of course there is an illegal market for it so we really have no idea how many girls were killed um, either when they were born or aborted in China because of course no records were kept for this the other thing is is that if they did have a girl a lot of times they would abandon the girl and put her up for adoption um, and that's why there was a large in China right now there's a huge amount of girls in um, government-run orphanages throughout China the United States tried to help address this with China by actually setting up um, an adoption program and that's why in the United States it's actually easier and more cost-effective to adopt a child from China than it is from the United States um, and that was because uh, China set up a relationship with the United States um, especially with the fact that they had too many girls in their orphanages and they needed someone else's help to take care of these girls so there are some social consequences there's a lot more and those articles talk about those but they're just some of the social consequences uh, now women are being sex traded I mean traded um, to being sold off um, so that men in China can marry uh, a Chinese woman to keep the Chinese lineage alive um, and so there's a lot of issues a lot of girls after they lifted the one China child policy in the fall of 2015 came forward to say um, I, I I was born and hidden in a village and I have no social security kind of number no identification that I actually exist so there actually may be a lot more girls than we know about that are alive in China um, and were hidden in villages the other thing is is that China wants its economy to grow significantly and if they don't have women in the workforce in the population then they can't grow their economy to scale to the size that they want it to be um, so that's another issue is that there's just not enough people in the population to create our cheap goods um, and that is an issue for China now is their economy is slow because they just don't have enough people now to work um, in the manufacturing businesses 
So lots, lots there. Um, the other thing is, is water. Uh, water, you'll be asked a question about the water cycle. So you need to look over that. Um, some innovative ideas about water have, of course, come about, which is really interesting. Um, two of the big issues with water are the fact that uh, resource use is that uh, we're going to have lack of access to fresh water because of sea level rise. Um, and we're going to have to put in desalination plants with the with desalination plants is the fact that it costs a lot of money and uses a lot of non-renewable resources to heat that water to extract the fresh water from it. So a, a couple questions with water will be on the final exam. Non-point and point source pollution will be on the exam. Um, Non-point source pollution we can uh, not trace back to the source, whereas point source pollution we can trace back to the source we know where it comes from. Non-point source pollution comes from a lot of different homes or businesses and we can't trace it back to that business or home. Um, so there are some of the questions on the final exam with water. One other thing with population, why is uh, the U.S. experiencing zero to negative population growth? Well, that actually has to do with the fact of freedom of women in the United States is that women are having um, less children because they are having children at a later age in life because number one, they've either entered the workforce or they are in college. Um, so then that has put push back the fertility rate in the United States, the years in which a woman is able to have children. The other thing is, is that um, cost of childcare in the United States is astronomical. The other thing is, is that the baby boomer generation is dying now. So that it was the last huge boom in population was after World War II, and that population will be dying off. So we'll be seeing, they're in their 60s, 70s, 80s now. We'll start to see that generation die off and behind that was we never had the same ratio of children born. So in the United States now, it's about 1.7 children for every two people. Um, and so that is a negative population growth right there. It's negative 0.3%. Okay. Um, so that's definitely something you want to consider. Okay. So that's enough from me. Um, remember, initial post due by Tuesday, response post due by Thursday, quiz due by Sunday. You need to watch Gasland. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and I hope everyone's doing well. Stay safe, wash your hands, follow the CDC um, guidelines.